deadline for the realization of your project? No deadline, but we're moving speedily towards it. What if you get CRSA? I don't care. In the past, you have asked your friends not to, I think, purchase his mind by your Yes. Why is it? You seem to have toned down in this industry. Yeah. Because they have changed as well. So people are saying that federalism is not working for Nigeria. How do you think that the new federal government? Confederation. Every ethnicity will have the right to control their resources and to govern themselves. There will be no interference from any group whatsoever. How do you react to the U.S. ambassador's prediction that Biafra is a failed project or Biafra, Biafra project is a they said something about the state of Israel in 1948 and it came into existence. It will come. There's nothing man can do to stop it. So in this new rapture, if it gets actualized eventually, would you contest for political positions? No. Why not? My job is to restore Biafra, not to serve it in any political capacity. How do you react to Ohane Zengi both his own name of you as well as that of Abra? I'm not sure they disown me. We disagreed, but the media would like to hype it up because they want to magnify the differences that we have. It's just mere emphasis, divergent views and emphasis. Basically, that's what there is to it. We're, we are Republicans by nature, so people are entitled to their views. I may not welcome it, but I defend their right to hold it all the time. Hi, Paul, and yourself reacted to the Arawa information to Google to the National Party. It wasn't directed at us, so I couldn't possibly react to it because it was not directed at us. But I, I think it goes to show that they're in tune with the prevailing trend, which is referendum. At least so we welcome the fact that some of them are Democrats. Yeah, I don't understand how it wasn't directed. You, you are the leader of Biafra. Are you both? Yes. It wasn't the North part. Right? They are part of Biafra. They've been, your, your landlord said you should go. Then what do you expect to do? Exactly. Your landlord said you should go, then try and go. If you said they will kill you, they've been doing it since 1945. They kill all the time, so it's nothing new to us. It was, it was reported that you had said uh, no elections in Alabama State. Do you think that can be possible without that bloodshed in Kingdom? How can you be bloodshedding when you're in your house sitting down and enjoying the Salah on the 18th of November, 2017? How is that bloodshed? When you say uh, no elections, mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. How do you intend to make this happen? Are you, are you going to declare that the Afghan sit at home on election day? Yes. Yes. There will be no movement. No cats, no dogs outside, no chicken, nothing. Okay. So Complete silence. Everyone. What did you do? Say that you're a hypocrite. Why? That, um, you have a British passport, mm -hmm. and yet you have asked the Afghan to destroy the Afghan in certain ways. What are your reactions? I never give such a directive. You're asking me a direct question. I, and I speak truthfully and directly. I did not give such an order. If people want to destroy whatever documents or papers they have on them, it doesn't tell you up to them. Okay. And I'm not a hypocrite either. Because I was... My land was forcibly taken over by external forces. And I'm being forced to live under it. It's my job to fight to get myself out of it. Now I'm the I had the British traveling documents before they still fought for independence and got it. Same thing applied to George Washington in America. He was a British colony settler, traveled about as a British citizen before he got USA out of the mess that was colonial rule from England. Same thing in India. There's nothing new. I've been now uh, in the public limelight for close to four years, so people know what I can do and what I cannot do. If people wish to delude themselves with false propaganda information about me, they're more than entitled to it. I cannot stop them from doing so. But what I say to them is that those people who are feeding you this junk information about me, they do not wish you well. People like us, IPOB, are the only ones that can save you from your chronic poverty, from your diseased state of mind, from your horrible bad roads, from your non-existent hospitals, from your absence of infrastructure and we're the only ones who can make it possible to, for you to get a job that's how it is all those people telling you all those nonsense about Namde Kanu is because they know that Namde Kanu is capable of articulating a policy or a viewpoint that can get you out of the mess that you're in so they want you to remain poor to remain blind for your parents to be dying 
it benefits them. So, um, basically, you began granted bail conditions. Yes. And um, the Nigerian government and a lot of public opinion analysts mm -hmm. seem to think that they're breaching the bail conditions. Where were those people when Buhari refused to obey court order upon court order upon court order? Why didn't anybody go to Daura or go to Asarok to ask Buhari why he'd failed to obey court orders? To set me free to release Dasuki and to release Zagzagzagi. Why have they not obeyed the court order to release Bright Chimeze Ishiwa as pronounced by a competent court of law in Uyo? Why don't you concern yourself with the gross abuse of human rights being perpetrated on a daily basis by DSS, by the police, and by the army. Why are you not trying as hard as possible to uncover the mass grave that they have in army barracks in Onitsha? Why have you not questioned them about the amnesty report and about the slaughter and the butchering of our people? Why are you people so hell-bent on things that don't matter? Whereas you should be concerning yourself with things that actually matter. Have you asked them why you have no light? Why you must run a generator? Have you asked them why they import refined fuel when you have four modern refineries, and you have abundance of crude oil. Have you asked them any of those questions? Why don't you have good roads? You have aggregates, you have stones, you have bitumen coming from the ground. Why do you have bad roads? And you have unemployed graduates of structural or should I say civil engineering. Why are you not asking them all those questions? Because they understand that the they can't mean well for the masses, for the people, the downtrodden, people who are suffering because of poverty. They turn your mind around because they know you are not disciplined enough to understand that you need to stand your ground to demand for what is yours. That is why it is very easy to twist the mind of a black person. Che Guevara came to Congo to fight. Many, many years ago, over 50 years ago, why did he leave? Because he said, a black African man cannot be disciplined enough to put the need of his self-preservation and survival over the need of the stomach. How can they perform when there is no Southeast leader who is responsible for the maintenance of the Enugu Iwacha, which is Port Harcourt Expressway? How can I hold any governor responsible when all these so called federal roads are denied any form of attention or maintenance? How can I? Because it, is not, it's, it, it belongs to what they call the exclusive list. So now tell me, how can I hold them responsible for that? Are they meant to build Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to build a Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to compel the Africa Development Bank to provide underwriting loans to people who want to borrow money to build factories and industries? Is it their fault as well? But who builds the roads in the north? From the same oil money coming from Okwa. From the same proceeds from gas fields in Ohaji, in Ebema. And you're telling me you're in one Nigeria, one viable, unity-driven country. Is a charade, is fake, is a lie, and I'm sure you know it. So, um, I was going to Twitter, and um, there's this tweet you know, trending about yes. a certain Ekita Chidika. Yes. Who drove you home yes. from prison. Mm -hmm. And now he's declared that he's going to campaign for the elections in Ananda. Yes. And then now you are home again to say no elections in Ananda. Yes. There is no irony because I'm a very consistent person. I do not change. People can change as their business. I don't change. I'm a number can I don't change. I don't change. You don't think this is some kind of betrayal? That Osita Chidoka drove me from prison. Is you want me to walk from prison from Kujia to Abuja? So people felt that um, he was lending you a helping hand. He was supporting you when you were in prison. He was not supporting me. He was concerned about my plight as any other sensible human being ought to be. That's what he was trying to do. Being reasonable. And that's what he did. I'll do the same thing. I got the fact that I got lawyers for suspected Boko Haram inmates at DSS. Does that mean I'm a Boko Haram supporter, sympathizer? The fact that I brought friends of ours are people detained at DSS illegally for nearly four years. Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Exactly. So why should Otita Chidoka giving me a lift from prison represent anything extraordinary?
Because they know that's what will appeal to you. I said it earlier, your primordial instinct of debasing yourself to your jealousy, basically. People who try to be like me cannot be like me, so they resort to very cheap slander and blackmail. But I welcome it. It makes me become a better. I work twice harder than I should. So the more these battles come, the better for me. They know they're misguided. They know they're lying. They know what they're saying is false, but they say it because they're hoping to tap into the reservoir you have of greed, envy, and jealousy. Maybe if you cannot defeat them, they can in a recent debate. Why don't we try greed and jealousy? Look at him. He's only he's him. Why not somebody else? You can't be me because you can never be me. You've gotten the question wrong, in my view, because there can never be an end to Biafra. Biafra will come. It doesn't matter what man does. It will come. So no one can there, stop it. There is, there, there is an Igbo question tomorrow. If you like, let my wife be the first woman U.S. president. It won't stop me. It's very interesting how you get um, news uh, that you consider to be newsworthy or the wrong type of news and not the positive one. Myself came here we, along with 15 other groups and made me the overall leader of the Afro. I'm sure you're aware of that. Try and report that more often. We're not fighting each other. We know where we're going. We're going to get the Afro. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Absolutely nothing. 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 I need them to understand this. We've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return. There is nothing anybody can do. If I'm alive, if I'm dead, if I'm wherever I may be, Biafra will come. If I'm dead, it's even better because it will come far more quicker. I can assure you. If Biafra is fighting for you, no one will touch your property. If you're fighting alone, you're bound to lose it. So Biafra is the best. We will become the 16th member country of ECOWAS. If Nigeria doesn't release those properties, then we'll take them to court and we'll get them back. Even twice the value. The Jews had investments all over the world. Most of the priceless artifacts and paintings belonged to many families in Germany. It was stolen by the Nazi party. Do you know that? Eventually they got everything back with compensation on top of it. That's what we're going to do. If you touch our investments, we'll come back for you. And we know where we can get it from. So there is nothing for anyone to worry about. It's the only, if you, I'm not stopping you from being a Nigerian, if you, if you are born on the streets of Lagos and you want to be a Lagosian and your, your name is Adamman. Oh, well and good. There's no problem. <laughs>